getting back here today and, and tomorrow. So I'll be able to get you, get you a little bit more then. Um, but listen, we look forward to the challenge of playing Denver. You get to see how close uh, the competition is, um, not only in our division, but around the league, the parity is unbelievable. And, and so uh, we'll get started here tomorrow and, and uh, you know, take the first step of preparation to play a good Denver team. We, we saw them play yesterday and they sure are a good football team. Um, let me just say something before we jump into it real quick. Okay, well, maybe that's right. Yeah. Um, um, just hold on one yeah. second. Just, uh, um, Thank you. Yep. Hold on one second, Coach. Somebody came off mute for us. Okay, there we go. Sorry, Coach, go ahead. Yeah, just uh, I just want to, um, you know, mention Curly Culp, uh, one of the great, all-time great Kansas City Chiefs Hall of Famer, uh, playing the nose guard position, which is a tough thing to do, but also just a phenomenal athlete. I mean, championship of the NC2A wrestler, heavyweight wrestler, and then also pro football Hall of Famer. So uh, my heart goes out to his family. Um, I, I've had a chance to talk to Emmett, who was very close to him. And I, I've read, I, I not only listened to Emmett, Sam, but I saw what he put out there. And um, I, I just know how much he meant to that, that football team and this organization. So uh, one of the real building blocks of what what is now the Kansas City Chiefs. Anyways, with that, time's yours. Let's go first to Herbie T.O.P. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Hope you had a good Thanksgiving <laughs> break. Yeah, thank you. Hey, hey, Brad, I'll have two questions. Coach, I know you don't have any injuries for us, but two straight games for Lucas. He's missed two straight games, uh, Lucas Nang. Where is he in his recovery process, and what are you hoping to see out of him this week? And, Brad, I'll have another one. Yeah, well, he's making good progress uh, prior to the bye. I'll get a report today on him. Um, so I, I think he, you know, there's a chance he's ready. I, I can't tell you until I see him. But. Okay. And then finally, Coach, uh, how long was designated to return on November the 9th? And if my math is correct, the 21 day window expires tomorrow. Uh, what are you hoping with him uh, going forward for the rest of the year? Yeah, so listen, he's uh, worked his tail off during his recovery time here. <clears throat> we'll see how all of that goes here, Herbie. Um, we're sorting through all of that uh, today, but um, I, I've, I appreciate having him here and, and doing what he's been doing too uh, and how he's handled everything. So uh, we'll make the decision. And I, I leave that up to Brett, and the doctors and that, but uh, we'll make that decision here today. So. Let's go next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Andy, a um, couple things. First, I just wanted to check with you what, if anything, you all did as a team last week. Did was there any meetings? Was there any? Did you get on the field at all, or was last week a complete week off? And Brad, I'll have a second question as well. Yeah, we had a week off. Okay. Go ahead, fire your other question. Okay. Uh, Pat talked about after the Dallas game about trying to maybe get the ball more to Clyde as a receiver. Have you talked to him about that at all? Um, is that any kind of priority for you going forward? Well, I've said that since he's been here. I mean, that's uh, he's he's a valuable tool in the, the way that, um, if you want to look at it that way, that uh, um, because he can catch the ball so well. So, um, uh, last game was just a matter of getting him back in and and, and get him back rolling again. So, uh, I thought he did a nice job there and had a couple grabs and did good with that too. So, um, but no, he becomes a valuable piece in the in the offense let's go next to Aaron Ladd go ahead Aaron coach appreciate the time here hope you got to eat good yeah. this past week and enjoy some time off uh there's going to be oh. a lot made of, about your record coming out of the bye week uh, especially uh, in the regular season in the playoffs I think everybody's a little bit better with a little extra rest but maybe there's something you can pinpoint that uh makes you guys so lethal lethal in your staff coming uh, out of the bye week oh I I know I've, I get asked that every year I'm not I'm not sure what it is. Um, we go back and we try to review everything, um, but and make whatever corrections. But uh, I don't, I don't know what the secret. If there, there's any secret there, I think everybody kind of does that. Let's go next to Matt Derrick. Good, Matt. Hey, coach. Good to see you. Um, 
I'm curious about what goes through your mind when you find out that a game like this has been flexed. Um, to you, is is that a, a positive that you get moved to a, a Sunday night game, or are there any downsides to it? Anything you have to change in your process? There's not. No, there's not really anything you have to change uh, that's immediate in the process. Um, normally, you try to get a jump later in the week. Um, uh, on the following team because you're not going to have any time uh you know you're going to be it's a late night and you're going to have a relatively early morning without any sleep so you try to get a little bit of a jump on the the team coming up um at least some coaches do that you know but other than that everything's the same let's go next to sam mcdowell go ahead, sam hey brad i've got a couple things um andy just real quick last time we talked to you was Sunday after the game and Tyron had had that knee issue. Um, how did he come out of that game? Um, he came out actually okay. Um, he, he was able to push himself through, which was amazing. I mean, he um, he's, he's a tough kid, so tough-minded. Um, that also carries over to the defense. Our, you know, our players knew that he wasn't quite where he wanted to be and and, uh, and yet he didn't say anything. He just kind of pushed himself through it, you know. And then it seems like the bye week offers you, like you mentioned earlier, that the time to, to self-evaluate more so than maybe the, the first 11 weeks did. Um, what did you learn about your team as you went through that process last week? I can't, I, how am I going to tell you that? I, I can't. If there was anything good, I mean, I tell you, I tell the world, right? So, uh, Sam, doggone it. Um, no, listen, there's always a little something you find out about yourself. I mean, and yeah, because you have extended time, it gives you the opportunity to look even a little deeper. Although we try to do it on a week to week basis. So there weren't any huge surprises, but there's always a little nugget in there somewhere if you look hard enough. Last two, we'll go Seren and then Nate. Go ahead, Seren. Uh, Coach, Patrick got asked uh, about a stat uh, that's gone around out there that I think it was six of his interceptions were, you know, in this this advanced metrics world we live in that 75% or more, they, six of the interceptions uh, were likely to be caught, right? But not, not be intercepted, caught by his guys. It's a terrible way of asking the question. Uh, I apologize for that. But anyway, the idea being that it was a ball that should have been caught by his guys and, and it ended up being intercepted. He just kind of laughed it off. Um, you know, and said, wow, that's interesting and did what he kind of does in a leadership role. But is there a time where, you know, some of those, there's a time for him or you or Eric that, that somebody jumps on the guys that are letting the ball go through their hands. We saw Denver take one of those against the chargers back for a touchdown. And, you know, you've talked about kind of the self-inflicted wounds. How do you kind of manage the, the part about, Hey guys, let's start catching the ball. Yeah. So I, I always say that interceptions are, can be spread around to different people. It's not always necessarily the quarterback. <clears throat> so, but inevitably he has the ball in his hand last and, um, or he's the one throwing it. So uh, again, Pat's always going to take the responsibility for it, but th there's always another, there's always another part of that, you know, whether it's the call, whether it's the protection, whether it's, you know, the a receiver tipping it, a D lineman tipping it, you know, whatever it might be. So uh, linebacker tipping it. We saw a couple of those this weekend. So, um, you, you know, the, the uh, but it all ends up kind of the same. It's an interception. We all take responsibility for it. We all try to work on fixing our problems and you move forward. Uh, that's part of this thing being a true team game. I mean, if you look at the big picture of it, um, it it's, you got to get people kind of dancing the, the same dance. And if not, I mean, you can be off just by a tick and something crazy happens. Um, and then there are also times when the quarterback shouldn't have made the throw. I mean, th those happen in there too. So I'm, I'm not excluding uh, that position, but uh, there, there are a lot of factors that go into it. We'll go last to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey coach, good to see you. I just wanted to ask um, two guys in particular, what you've appreciated most this year from Travis Kelsey and Rashad Fenton? Yeah, um, well, Travis just, you know, he, <clears throat> he keeps growing as a player, leader, uh, person. Um, <clears throat> he always works on his game. Um, 
he, he, you know, kind of pushed through uh, the tough time and, and showed great consistency during that time. And um, this, the early in the season, uh, but kept leading. We, you know, um, Eric Benemy put together a tape actually for the offense and it showed, <clears throat> it showed um, Kels, his leadership for the young guys. Um, also, when something wasn't going right, how he'd go up to players and say something to them in, in a positive way and kind of get them going. So he's, uh, he's really taken that role seriously. And that's fun to see. Fenton um, <laughs> is one of my favorite guys because he's so, he's so mellow and yet he plays so aggressive. Um, if you watch him during practice, he just kind of cruises along and then all of a sudden there's that burst once he gets out there. But if you just saw him walking on the field, you go, man, this guy needs to get some sleep. But yet when he plays in practice and when he plays in games, um, he's a different guy um, and very, very likable guy.